Okay, so fun on game today. Um, Ethereum finally, finally popped his head um, above the um, the level that we wanted it to, the $2,142 level. First time um, in a long time, um, it's actually managed to pop its head above that level. Now we did kind of talk about how Ethereum was lagging and how it could you know it's potentially it's not a good thing right you know if ethereum isn't catching up btc's moved the largest um coin by dominance has moved ethereum the second largest coin by dominance should also move but it hasn't right so i talked about how that's a bad sign now um we're not quite out of danger obviously this is the first time we've um gone above we peaked above we still have about an hour and a half approximately like midnight tonight in uk right midnight tonight the candle will close so um we need the candle to close and stay above and then we need one more candle to print on a positive note so if it prints green candle and it stays green that's the confirmation candle right so the second candle we're going to get is a confirmation so whatever we did today is great it's something to celebrate but it's not the um ultimate uh thing for us to say okay this is it right now if beat um, ethereum right now actually ends up printing another positive candle and then now we're on a whole different level right for this cycle you know for ethereum like okay next level we're going to be testing out the 2800 and so on and so forth right because then we can now i mean if we hold support where we are now right and you can see that purple line right we broke through this right if we can hold support above that um then it's new targets it's new targets for all of us right so that means i've got to give you a new target everyone's got to give you a new target and then we can see where the market goes right however there is one other thing to notice is on the higher time frame on the weekly time frame right so remember we were we had this signal where we, we were constantly looking at the market and seeing that we're overbought right especially on the btc we're overbought you know so obviously all of that is there now there's no i mean so far even on the weekly even though we're overbought if you look closely at the rsi so if you put your charts on and you look closely at the rsi what you will find is the rsi is still pointing up and the rsi has not peaked out so the only thing that has peaked out is the stochastic rsi right that's usually the regular sentiment right so the regular sentiment has peaked out but not to con not you know not to worry too much about but when we do see the RSI, we can see that still has room to grow. Yes, it's on the top level, but it's not the highest it's ever been, right? So again, you know, we were going to take it with a pinch of salt. The probability of it coming down is quite low right now. You know, again, this all kind of aligns with the that, that middle of December thing I talked about, right? So everything should be good until middle of December. So the, any weaknesses we are going to see, we're going to see around that time. And it all um, depends on a rejection, right? And when I talk about rejection, also depends on ethereum's rejection so if today ethereum ends up getting a rejection or this week ethereum ends up getting a rejection from where it is right now right the today's current right now the price right if it starts getting a rejection then that could be devastating for the market because i've always said to people i said guys um you know think about ethereum as like how would i say this like it's one of those it's an indicator right it's an indicator if btc is moving it's all great you know we see btc moving um but ethereum doesn't do anything that's dangerous that means that you know the pumps are happening but it's not happening everywhere because you've got to look at the largest coins and see what's happening there right so we saw a lot of small caps a lot of small coins a lot of um, very cheap coins now actually very cheap coins pumping and we've been positive so far we haven't looked at anything in a negative way apart from the fact that btc was um indicating um that it's overbought the weekly and ethereum was lagging right and that was the concern right but now that concern we can now you know throw it in the bin at least for a few weeks uh, and then focus on new targets right because that's what this is the thing guys what until we hit a specific target all right that we set for ourselves a price uh, point that we set for ourselves and say right this is where we need to get above right until we get above that level right we can't really be talking about higher levels we can't really be talking about what the next moonshot's going to be or how devastating it's going to be how how low we're going to go we can't say none of that it all depends on targets right so we've done our target we've met our target uh we broke through i'm celebrating the part that we broke through i'm not excited quite yet because i don't have my confirmation candle i do need a confirmation candle right but other than that everything is looking good we do have enough room even in this 
daily candles to grow further, right? So the volatility might be a little bit higher right now because we've just broken through this major, major resistance level that we had for God knows how long, right? Anyway, we beat through that. So that's all good. I'm really excited. Um, I, I, I can imagine the, the market wouldn't take that long now to hit the $1.5 trillion level. Again, when it hits that level, you will see a lot of excitement, a lot of things happening. Um, so, so far, so good. Also, I was monitoring the futures rates um, and you know what people are looking at for the futures price. And I can see everybody's now kind of in line with that BTC going to 40K. Uh, so, you know, that's definitely on the horizon. In fact, today, I think we almost, almost touch 40k um, again good thing to celebrate because if we can hit 40k then we can hit 42k and then we can hit um, 44k 46k 48k not a problem right all of these signs are very good as I said even on the weekly though you know we are showing overboard uh, there's enough room for us to move forward so really other than that I didn't really want to say anything else all right this video is going to be a short and sweet video um, you know, up to now, right? So if you want to uh, listen to all of this, and great, right? I'm, I'm sure you've heard of this. So that's that. Now, when I look at other market stuff, right? And this is a bit of a bonus. So the video is over, right? The video is over. So like, share, subscribe, and adios, my amigos, right? But right now, what I'm about to say is a bit of a bonus, right? So those of you who like a little bit of a longer video, this may interest you. I want to talk a little bit about something I saw on Discord earlier on today. Right again, it's nothing bad, it's good, but I want you to understand certain things, right? So, somebody posted something about the uh total three, total three, right? Now, first of all, what you got to understand about total one, right? So, let's talk about total that's everything, right? And everything that is being tracked, so it's not entirely everything, but it's everything when we talk about total. So, you got to really understand what total means right total um isn't the two million coins that's there total is what's being tracked right so it could be a million tokens it could be a hundred thousand tokens it could be five hundred thousand tokens that's the total so understand what total uh defines right that's what total is then you've got total two which is excluding btc right excluding bcc total two again you got to understand is it the full two million coins all right or is it 500,000 coins maybe 100,000 coins maybe 20,000 coins you don't know so when you do see these numbers total and total two you got to be careful then you get to see total three now again the same rule applies how many coins are being tracked by total three so when the narrative is given that oh total three is about to do a breakout and it's about to pump go parabolic and this and that just be careful it may not be the coin you're thinking about the very coin you're kind of looking at and saying oh this coin is about to do a breakout they, that may not even be a part of total three right so understand where that comes from so i want people to understand when you're looking at total yes it's a lot more data great i'm okay with that but when i'm seeing total two and total three being flashed or being showed off right I want you guys to be cautious because you have to understand what it really is. Is it everything? Okay? Because, you know, we have total one, total two, total three, and if you go on trading view, you also have total uh, DeFi. You have DeFi as well. Now, why do we need a DeFi, right? To see how much DeFi projects there are. Because there are segregations, there are, you know, actual categories. So you gotta understand what's what. Now, is DeFi being added onto total? you got to ask these questions, right? So I'm just trying to help you open your eyes and see the market for what it is, see the data for what it is, and understand that it may not have everything in there. Remember, we have 2 million plus coins. So just be cautious at what you're looking at, right? We've got coins that are months old, coins that are weeks old, coins that are days old, and a lot of them are good projects as well. So I'm not saying all of them are bad projects, when it comes to making money if they make you money they're good projects right but they they might not be a part of any of those totals so understand this right that's all i want just complete clarification to understand that you know what does it mean yes total might break out yes total might go parabolic but which total that's the question you got to be asking right total one total two total three or total shitcoin we don't know right 
So be realistic when you start looking at these things. And of course, when you, you know, start following somebody else's narrative, you know, somebody else is saying this is going to happen. Well, this is going to happen to what? Two million coins? Well, you've got to really, you know, sit back and say, right, okay, there are two million coins being tracked. And I can guarantee you two million coins are not being tracked, right? There's a lot of coins that have um, come up, have been listed on CoinMarketCap, CoinGecko, CoinFabrica, wherever, right? You know, DeFi, Dex Tools, whatever, it doesn't matter. They're all there. But it doesn't necessarily mean that TradingView is also tracking them. Understand this, right? That's all I want you to know. So that's something I just wanted to add as a bonus at the end. Um, I'm not having a go at anybody. I just want to open your mind and say, like, look, guys, you know, be realistic, right? Don't, don't fall for the trap because that's what it is. And remember what I said to you, right? A lot of um, big, big channels out there have the capacity to move certain markets, right? To move certain prices. So when it comes to those um, uh, narratives that they're giving to you, just take it with a pinch of salt of course buy sell do whatever they say i don't have a problem with that you know if you're following them but understand that a lot of the times whatever they're doing they're most probably sponsored by that coin because they're not giving you all the coins right that when, when someone's showing you a chart or maybe even some crypto bubbles or whatever right of which co coins done what sometimes they're showing it to you on a screen and you see a coin is done 10,000% or a coin is done 200% or coins done 100%. But what you'll find is they're not talking about that coin. Now you've got to ask yourself, if you're showing me a, a bubble chart, right? Or a heat map of all the coins, then why are you being selective with particular coins, right? And I am selective. Now, don't get me wrong, right? I am absolutely selective, right? Now, when I am selective, I'm being honest with you. I'm being transparent with you that I'm not looking at all the shit coins, right? I'm looking at coins that I can plug my funds in and I know my funds are going to be safe because what I'm trying to avoid is rug pulls and dumps, right? Yes, there are thousands, thousands, hundreds of thousands of projects out there, right? That I can look at the coin bubbles and whatnot, right? And I can pick all of them and do whatever, but or, or follow someone's narrative. But ultimately, if the probability of a dump on that particular coin is high, I don't want to know about it. I don't want to know about it. Does that make sense to you, right? So that's how I look at certain things, um, you know. And there's another thing as well. So on a previous video, we did the six coins. Um, this message is specifically for one um, person who commented. So he's from Discord. He commented on the video and he said he has five of them, but he didn't have one of them, right? He has five of the coins, but he doesn't have Casper. That's the one that he needs to add on. I want to kind of just, you know, say this to you, right? You know, this particular person. It's good you have the five coins. It's good that you're planning to buy all six coins. But what I want you to do is also understand that they're not going to last forever so if you do make significant gains make sure to hit that trigger and sell all right make sure you have enough emotional control to hit sell because when the market's going to flip it's not going to notify you before it flips all right my, okay fine we might be able to tell you when the probability is going to be for the market to flip right it's quite easy i can tell you on a chart what's going to happen right and probably even along, you know, around what time is going to happen, right? Or what day? I can probably tell you that, but I don't want to do any of that right now. This is not the video for this, right? All I'm saying is, are you prepared to sell, right? Because there is going to be a time where you're better off selling all of this five, six coins after you've made significant gains and then waiting to pick it up on the bottom again. Like the other day, I did it on the video, I, I said it to you guys on the video, there was a coin called SEI, right? SEI. I said, right guys, you know, uh, actually I did it on Discord, sorry, my bad, on Discord. On Discord, I said to everyone, um, you know, if you bought it, great, we're going to be looking at around 28 cents and then we're going to dump. Of course, the, the coin went further, the coin went almost up to 20, sorry, up to 30 cents. Great, we don't care how high it goes. What we were looking at is, is there a dump coming? And I did mention, I said, wait until reset, then, you know, just sell, dump, whatever. And then when you're comfortable, get out. But 
and then you can buy it around the 23 cents. Now, we did go down to 22 and a half, right? But that was kind of a signal that, look guys, don't be afraid to sell it. Don't be afraid to sell it when we know it's heated up. And then don't be afraid to buy it because now you're buying a lot more for whatever money you've got, right? So you've accumulated a few more, right? Now you buy and you hold, right? Wait for the next target. When it hits that, sell, get out, right? So the next target I kind of set up was 34 cents. However, complete transparency, I did go on the chart today, this morning, I went on the chart, right? And the time now is like, I don't know, what the, what's the time now? Time now is about 10.49 p.m., right? And I'm talking like 12 hours ago, about 10 o'clock in the morning, right? I went on the chart and I put a Fibonacci. I put a Fib, that's it, just a simple Fib tool, right? And I said, right, okay, I saw 34 the other day based on the other day's price. Let me see what the new price is. Because remember, the data is changing, right? The data is dynamic. It changes every day depending on the current status of the market. So I looked at it and I said, if we're bullish, what's the um, current high that I might be seeing or current resistance level I might be seeing, right? Remember, we've broken all the resistance. So now we're kind of playing around, floating around in, you know, midair, right? There is no, no resistance, nothing. Everything we're going to do now is brand new, right? We're going to be discovering new um, support zones, new resistance zones, brand new, right? So I looked at that and I was like, okay, let me see what it's going to be. And it flashed 37 cents, 37 cents. I'm looking at that and I'm like, okay, where are we right now, right? Where are we right now? At that time, we were around, I think, 23 or 24 cents. I'm looking at it, I'm like, 37 13 cents right that's like a good 30 35 percent pump maybe not happening a single day but that's a good probability i don't i don't see a problem with that right i don't see a problem with that um so i saw that and then obviously today we pumped all the way close to like i think it was um 28 cents again and i'm like oh this is good right this is good and currently we're sitting at 27 dollars sorry 27 cents right we're sitting at 27 cents not bad we did three cents Okay, I forgot how many percentage you are. I think it was like seven, eight percent, nine percent, whatever nonsense it was, or maybe ten percent. I don't know, right? But the point is, is that's already done. I'm like, okay, so we're not that far. If we're at twenty-seven cents right now, then thirty-seven cents is another ten cents. It doesn't really take much for us to get there. Do you see what I mean, right? So that's how I'm looking at it now. Get all of that over. We don't want to talk about those numbers anymore. Right? So if you bought it, if you're holding, good luck to you. Well done. That's what I'm going to say. Well done. And if you've cashed out, even bigger well done to you. Right? Anybody who got the ability to make profit, take the cash out, and then wait for a dip, you're doing fantastic. Right? Okay. Next thing I want to talk about. Now, one of the things that I noticed, right? And this is the conspiracy side of all of my things, right? So this is the conspiracy part, right? I saw something on Friday. I noticed something on Friday and I did panic, right? I did panic for a bit. And understand where I'm coming from. And, you know, the panic has gone, but my um, tinfoil hat is still on, right? Tinfoil hat is still on, right? So Friday, um, business hours, right? So we're looking at global business hours. So different countries have different time zones, right? Europe has a particular trading hours. USA has a trading hours. UK has a trading hours, right? Understand where I'm coming from. So once these trading hours were closed, and I'm talking about institutional trading hours, right? Just before they were closed. So I'm looking at each one of these times. What I noticed was there's this pattern. The like the pumps happened before a particular time zone. The next pump happened before a particular time zone. The one after happened before a, a particular time zone. So I'm talking about three particular time zones, right? Asia, you know, USA and UK. So I'm looking at that. And these pumps happen and then that was it. And that's kind of what led to the market going to 39K, right? 39,500 or something or even higher, almost 40K anyway. That's what happened. But this current pump, um, happened during the weekend, right? So Friday, before business hours was closed, so before business uh, business closed, the pumps happened and then the institutions went home, right? I'm thinking to myself, and this is the conspiracy, I'm thinking to myself, um, what if they did that on purpose to pump it on Saturday and Sunday? Because you know, most of the retail, when they see that, they're going to jump in and go mad about it. So they've boosted it just enough so the retail are triggered to go in and, you know, start 
buying. Retail buys, market pumps 40K in the weekend, right? They come Monday morning and they dump. Think about it. They come Monday morning and they dump. Also known as a, you know, fake out, right? So if you think it's a breakout, it's not, it's a fake out because that's what they did. But we wouldn't know until all the CME gaps and whatnot, all of these nonsense are filled, right? We wouldn't know what they actually plan to do until Monday morning, right? So it's a conspiracy, but that's what it is now. Monday morning, if, now these are ifs and buts, right? <laughs> Let's just do it. If. if they come and decide to dump. However, the retail are still buying and can buy faster than they can sell. Well, guess what? the market doesn't get affected. So you see, there's, there is a plus side to it. It's not all doom and gloom, right? Right. But I just looked at that and it was a bit, you know, it was like a bit of a coincidence. I was like, wow, that's a bit of a coincidence, right? The market actually pumped during the time when these guys would normally close up shop and go home, right? So just before that time, and I'm looking at the time till I'm trying to connect the dots. I'm like, wow, okay, this is quite interesting. Never seen one of those before. Or may I, you know, I think I have. I've seen it in the past. It's happened in 2017. I've seen similar kind of stuff. I can't remember seeing anything in 2020 or 2021, but I do remember specifically seeing similar kind of a pattern in 2017 when I had a lot of time in my hand, by the way. So I did see stuff like this where, you know, Fridays they will pump the shit out of it, excuse my language, go away and then come on a Monday and dump it, right? So they're profiting from the retail and the retails end up being a bag holder. So that's what I saw anyway. Uh, just thought I'd let you guys know. You decide what you do. Do your own research. You know, put your own thinking caps on. See what happens. Of course, I didn't put my face on this video. None of that matters. Um, I'm driving in the night, guys. It's 11, uh, almost 11 p.m. right now. Uh, it's pitch black. It's dark right now. It's cold outside, minus one degrees. Um, and the charts are going to be resetting in one hour, three minutes. There you go. I just looked and it says one hour, three minutes. So let's see what happens. Um, you know, good luck to all of you, as I said, good luck to all of you. But remember, the best traders, the best spot buyers, the best leverage traders are the, is the person who actually takes profit. You don't take profit. You are absolutely rubbish. That's what I'm going to say, right? So enjoy, enjoy the pumps and uh, congratulations on Ethereum going above the $2,142 level. Let's hope it closes and it stays above. So far, everything is indicating that it will probably stay above. And it's also indicating that tomorrow's candle could be a lovely positive one. Saying that, it is a Sunday. I wouldn't really be too uh, optimistic about it. I would rather wait until Monday's candle for me to uh, really see what the market wants to do. Monday's candle is going to be a decider candle. You know, week's going to close positive. Day's going to close positive. Even tomorrow's candle is going to be positive. But then that Monday candle, the you know, regarding the conspiracy, that's a different story. So if you watched it to now, um, I hope you enjoyed the video um, and uh, let's see where we go. Okay, so yeah, let's see where we go from there. And let me know in the comments what you think about the kind of theories I've had. Um, and if you have watched it to the end, that would be awesome. Um, and like, share and subscribe, guys. Other than that, uh, there's nothing else to say. Adios, my amigos.